All right, guys, I hope you're doing good. I tried something tonight that was very difficult. On Monday, I was sitting in this coffee shop outside San Francisco, working away, and saw a poster on the wall to come to a class the next night for comedy. So this is a crazy thing. I went to the class, I paid $20, chat with the guy, and he really encouraged me just to come back the next night. So that's what I did. I went back tonight, I thought, I'll just go and see what it's like and sit in the back. But they were so encouraging that I ended up just going up second, and I did seven or eight minutes. So I recorded it as well, and I wanna show you guys, not because I think it's good, because I don't think it is. I got some laughs though, which I was pleased about, but just because I saw an opportunity, I went for it, I gave it a go, and that was my first attempt. It's really fun just trying stuff. So here it is, I hope you enjoy it, and let me know when you guys just see an opportunity and take it. Um, try and film it so other people get to see it, because it's really encouraging when you see other people going for stuff and making it happen. All right, ciao, bye. Your next comedian is new to our room, so I want to make sure everybody gives him a lot of love, especially you comedians, all right? You know how fucked up of a job this is. Give it up for Dave Arams, everybody. Give it up for Dave. Hey, guys. Thank you for having me here tonight. Uh, as you can tell, I'm from out of town, uh, out of the country. Uh, I'm not from Australia, mate, which a lot of Californians seem to think I am, which is a bit disconcerting. Uh, but I'm actually from the UK, and uh, <coughs> I love being here. I've been here most of the year, and um, you know I, I like making stuff with the internet, uh, make businesses, make content on the internet, and so it's really fun being here. It's like a mecca. It's like going on a pilgrimage to the motherland. And uh, but the disconcerting thing is, you know, when I first started coming here a couple of years ago, people used to say to me, especially like in LA, they would be like, "Oh my God." Does, has anybody ever told you you look like Matt Damon? <laughs> and, and I'd walk out of there just like, that's right, that's right, born identity, that's right, that's how I roll. But you see, since I've been here for the last six months or whatever, I've been eating all the burgers for like brunch and I've been downing blue moons, which I love by the way, for like there's no tomorrow. And it's, it's, it's been a bit of an up and down journey and it's taken its toll predominantly on my waistline. And what I've noticed recently is that those comments have started changing a little bit. Like, like last two, about two weeks ago, I saw on Instagram, someone just straight up just said, Fat Damon. Like not Matt Damon, they're just straight Fat Damon. And I was like, oh, this isn't good. And then like yesterday, I promise you, yesterday or the day before, I can't remember which one, on Twitter, Somebody just lovingly said to me, Dave, you need to watch your waistline. And I was like, this is just like open dietary advice on the internet. This is not what I asked for. But um, even like a lot of people go for the kind of, um, you know, if you were the love child. So like people used to say, um, oh, um, you'd be the love child of Matt Damon and Jamie Oliver. Do you guys know that chef, that English chef? Yeah. 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 So I was like, that's pretty cool. He can do the cooking. He's a pretty good guy. But recently it's gone to like, you'd be like Matt Damon and James Corden's love child. And do you know him from The Late Show or whatever? And I was like, that's not what I'm going for right here. But the worst comment by far that I had was, is that Matt Damon with Down syndrome? I was like, what? The internet is a brutal place, people. Um, and, but it's been, a, it's been a good journey, like I, like I said, I've been living in my car, not living in my car, but just I've got my car and I'm staying with different friends around the Bay Area and it's been a beautiful time, full of highs and lows. But what I wanted to share with you guys tonight is the lowest point of my life so far. And I've told a couple of friends over dinner tables, but I've never stood up and told a bunch of people. And so this point happened to me about 10 years ago when I first started working in the internet business. I just got my first job, I was 19 years old, and I was working for this dude, and um, it was fireworks night. He was like, come around the house. So I thought, yes, this is awesome, I'm going around the house. And you know, I'm gonna get in there, I'm gonna get promotions, pay rides, whatever. I'm helping him out, and then like, my stomach just turned. And I felt, you know, it's not like, it's bad. It's like the whole thing just goes upside down like a washing machine. I went to the bathroom, as you guys call it, the loo as I would call it, and all hell broke loose, I'm gonna be honest with you, all hell broke loose, okay? And I was like, this is not good, not good at all. Thankfully, I was good for a couple hours. A couple hours later, it's right next to the living room, the lounge, and 
and it was coming towards the end of the night and everybody was sitting just on the other side of the wall and I was like, my stomach turned again. And I was like, if I go in there, I am gonna be, I, if, I'm gonna stink the place out, I'm gonna make the party end, I'm gonna lose my freaking job. So I was like, I can't be doing this. So I was like, dude, gotta go, gotta go. I didn't say it in an American accent, I picked that up from you guys. But I was like, gotta go, man. Jumped in my car, got on the freeway, like the 101, we call it the A3, outside London in the UK, and I started driving down the A3. Then it turns again. And I was like, this is not good, not good at all. And so then I'm driving along, and I'm like, putting my pedal down, like, fast. I'm in the fast lane. I'm going like 90. You probably get put in prison here for going 90s. You got such a slow, uh, such a slow speed limit here. It's like 55 in some places. That's crazy. We're like 70 miles an hour. But anyway, I'm going 90. <laughs> Pedal to the metal. And then it goes again. Now, if I'm honest, I've got clenched butt cheeks. That is my last form of defense against <laughs> the worst scum of the universe. And I'm going, I'm literally like horizontal like this, trying to drive trying to keep the clench and also keep my foot on the pedal. And it's like, uh-oh, this is terrible. I'm still 20 minutes from home. And then it goes again. And I, I'm left with only one option. The thing you never want to do. I had to trust a fart. I had to trust it. And I was like, I have to. I have to. I literally, I literally have to. And so just the tiniest little squeaker, I was like, I was like, oh no, oh, oh, oh no, 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 no. You have broken my trust, young fart. And I'm still scrub, and, and it's bad, it's bad. I'm gonna be honest, it's bad. So I'm like, Aah! all the way through the three lanes into the hard shoulder, right? And then I push the door open. But because I'm clenching as the last form of defense, I can't just get out of the car. So I'm like, and then I'm like, like getting out of the car, <laughs> clenching. And then I walk all the way around the back of the car to the other side. I'm like clenching, like dying, dying still. Like, I've had 1% out. I'm 99% still ready to blow. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And then basically I'm trying to pull my trousers down. The cars are like, And they're just kind of like, their lights are just beaming me. I can't see anything. It's like men in black. And I'm like, I can't do this. So I, 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 I move back and then I move back again. And then I moved back one more time, and I fell six foot down into this ditch. As I fell six foot down into the ditch, I lost all sphincter control, okay? I had my trousers round my ankles. I was covered in shit all over. And I was stung by the stingy nettles. I don't think you have stingy nettles here, but they're like these little oh, bastards. They're just, yeah, they're horrible. And thorns, I'm like bleeding, and I'm lying in my own shit <laughs> in the bottom of the trench. No one knows I'm there. <laughs> and that was the lowest point. But it got worse, because normally like the film would end and cut, and you're like, that's the end of the scene. But then I'm like, no one's gonna save me. I've gotta like get myself up now. So you get up, you throw, I had to throw my, you know, my skids away and just shamefully get back in my car and just drive off. Just knowing, knowing on the inside. I'm just, I'm just covered in feces. It's just terrible. I go home and I'm still living with my parents, I'm 19 years old. So I go into my house like one in the morning and then I've never dealt with this predicament before. I probably, probably when I was one, but I didn't know what was going on. I'm like, what do you do when you're absolutely covered in your own feces? So I went into the bathroom, <laughs> took my jeans off. I didn't have the pants, so I just, oh, underwear. I didn't have the, I took my pants off. I just threw them out the window. And then I just got in the shower and washed off just to, you know, seems like the right thing to do. Thought nothing of it, went to bed, <sighs> all sorted, fine. Woke up in the morning, my mum comes in. She's like, Dave, why are, why are your jeans lying in the garden covered in your own poo? And I was like, oh no, I've got to tell her. So I told her the story. I told a couple of friends, and you guys are the first people I've ever told that story to. So thanks very much for having me, and I was glad to tell it to you. Cheers.